How's it going everyone? This is Wimbo. I'm finally back. I was on vacation for a couple of days. It was nice. And uh, it seems forever I haven't been uploading a new case study. And, uh, and you know, I've been working hard and I believe same as you are. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do this jewelry image inside Blender. Without further ado, let's get started. Now let's get started with a brand new file. So I'm going to hit Shift A to loading a reference image. This time I'm gonna go with empty and then go to the image. Now you can see here we got something going on here and also on the left hand side, if we go to the top view, this is absolutely empty. So we need to go to the object data properties and then we're gonna load in the image. We can hit open. Then you can see that we have three reference image in here. Now I'm gonna load in the one on the side view, just hit that open image now you can see this is what we have in here if i'm go to the top view you can see that this is what it looks like i want to let you guys know blender is not the industry standard for jewelry modeling there are other 3d software like autocad they are the professional grading 3d modeling for jewelry the reason we're doing this is try to using some case study to getting more people to start using blender and just really understanding navigation and also everything with it let's just get started now i'm just gonna hit r to rotate it kind of position it a little well but still i don't know is this 100 percent in the right way so i'm actually can go to the opacity and check that and i can dial it down a little bit yeah so you can see that i still can see the image and now i can hit g to grab it and just kind of positioning in here hit r to rotate it in the front view so you can see that on the top view then i'm going to rotate it and the holding control that is going to move the image in the 15 degrees increment so i go to the front view now you can see we have things going on here so the, uh, the front view is going to be the number one the side view is going to be number three and the top view is going to be number five which is actually located on your keyboard number pad side okay so that's the very basic so i'm just gonna kind of change this to roughly getting as the best i can again this is not going to be a precise modeling but this is what we can do here so we got this one with front view then we can load in another image in here so we can quickly go here double click we can just say front view okay now next, so what I could do, I can make it a little bit easier. Just gonna click this and shift D to duplicate it while I'm just moving my mouse cursor. And then if I'm doing a right click and then it's gonna come back, but you can see here we have a duplicate. Next, I'm going to come in here and to rotate the image, control R again, 90 degree back. So this is going to be the top view image. Here, I'm just gonna click this unlink, open and find the image for the top view these are images that shot using iphone so as you can see here the quality is very bad but that's the whole purpose of doing this is we really don't need a super high quality images to do as a reference image which can just using a rough sketch but as you know you can get, definitely do this so we get something modeling and i'm not quite sure if the size of the top view is okay with the body so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to start modeling and then we're going to getting more things done and then adjusting accordingly okay so that's what we're going to do and then before doing that i just want to load one more image shift d give you guys a little bit more details about what this ring looks like in the real life so i'm going to open the third image and I'm gonna increase the opacity. So this is what it looks like. And for the detail size, you can see here, this is not a square. So on the lower part of this edge is actually shorter than the top part. That's for something that we're gonna make sure we're going to have it. And also you can see here from the side view, you can see this is from the one side going to the other side. The way the positioning these, there's not really symmetry. So if I go to the top view, you can see here is from here to there they're not directly in the center in the middle of each part so that's what we're going to do but just want to let you know this is another reference image we can have so i'm just do the third detail reference and you don't have to really change the name but for the sake of the good habit i just want to let you guys know that the more organized you are doing your file is going to be help you long term is going to help everything 
flow much easier for me i just want to do that so i can go to the say top view okay good so all these are reference image what i would do here select these and holding the shift key select all that and hit the m key and then i can creating a new collection so i can just say reference okay image i know it's a lot of rename but that just keep everything organized okay so now next we can really actually start modeling right now you can see here this is called 3d cursor basically everything when we add in with a mesh or anything is going to generating through this point you can change the position of 3d cursor you can holding shift and right click so it can just kind of move things around right or i accidentally hitting the wrong button so i'm i'm actually move the 3d cursor what i can do to reset shift s to getting a pi menu and then we're just going to send cursor to world origin so it's going back that's a quick tip for you guys next we are going to actually start building the mesh as you can see here by look at this ring because this is a male's wedding ring it's very simple but it's actually a little bit more difficult than the regular ring because the ring band for guys is just like one circle just, there's nothing cool about it but this one a little bit different you can see here this is definitely like a cylinder with a kind of thickness so i'm going to start with cylinder okay shift a to adding a cylinder and then the mesh we're going to go with cylinder in here so now suddenly we have a pretty big cylinder gum here and definitely because blender is using a one meter increment so you can see here everything is in meter so this is relatively big size if you're really doing accurate 3d modeling for your jewelry pieces i would recommend you to have some add-ons also changing the measurement according to the correct units so right now it's in the meters i'm not really bothering too much but i just want to let you guys know be aware this is not a really real world modeling for precise works okay i'm going to hit s to shrink it down and then just get in here and as you can see here this is the, the wrong way so i'm going to go to the side view hit the r to rotate it and then i'm going to see here this is what it looks like and i hit alt z to kind of do go to the extra mode hit s to kind of scale it up now as you can see here this is not a perfect round so what i would do i'm actually going to select the front view i'm not I'm just gonna hit the g and z or z axis and i'm gonna move it up a little bit trying to position this reference image in the perfect center and i'm pretty sure the cylinder we added in is in the center so i'm just gonna make that as a reference i'm just gonna make this size getting a little bigger and so far it's looking good and i'm going to select the front view again kind of rotate it a little bit i think this looks pretty good by now so i go back to select the cylinder hit s to shrink it up a tiny bit then this is good so now we can have something going on here and we know what it looks like now next thing we're going to do go to the side view this is definitely not a ring look like that's too thick i don't know how thick this one's going to be what i would do here i'm going to hit s y just kind of shrink it down on the side view just give myself a, a estimated to feeling about this ring and then i'm going to go to the top view since i have a reference image from top view so what i would do next i'm actually going to utilize this to making sure all the portions are looking right okay so i can go to the top view and select this and I'm actually kind of bump up the reference opacity a little bit so now what i would do here i'm going to select this hit g and y moving on the y axis and just come back here since we already have a 3d model that based on what we have in the front view so i'm also i think the front view looks more accurate so what i would do here i'm going to shrink it down the top view and then just gonna move down here to kind of match the, the view hit r to rotate it to getting that properly line up hit s to shrink it to hit s to scale it up okay so i'm moving here and s to scale it up hit gx so i think when i actually photographing this with my iphone i didn't like line up super perfectly but at least i know this is going to be something like this size r 
also i want to let you guys know when i was shooting this kind of reference image i was using the iphone and also portrait mode which is actually give you a telephoto perspective it has less distortion when you're photographing the actual product so that's something that I keep in mind according to what we have here this is not a perfectly straight pointed so if i'm a camera supposed to go in here and right now according to the shape this is not a super accurate reference anyway so just want to let you guys know so i figured that out but still you can do a lot of amazing stuff with it now it seems like properly line up what i can do next I'm actually be able to disable all these selection error. So you can access these, you're gonna go to this filter, you can just making sure that being highlighted so you can have this access, okay? I don't want to move all these, so simply I can just disable the entire folder. So ne next time when you click this, the, the image is not gonna be selectable, only the other mesh that I wanna target on. So it's gonna make my life a little bit easier, okay? I'm just going to rename as rain body yeah since we're going to have a kind of like another parts with this ring next i'm going to do here alt z to kind of getting the the salt mode seems like i'm probably having good size of this reference image i'm just going to start with that okay so it looks a little, maybe a little bit thick but you know this is just a tutorial for a blender user to practice a start by actually going in there here so now if i'm going here go to the tab edit the mode and then alt z you can see we can see more content in here so what i would do here i'm actually gonna select this area is getting kind of a tube going on because right now it's a solid piece of a metal or a solid piece of thing <laughs> what i would do here i'm gonna hit number three to select it as a face selection mode and then go to the solid mode alt z and i'm gonna select this front face and the back face okay so all these faces together and then i'm gonna go to the front view alt z again go with the x-ray mode you're gonna hit i to insert it and it's just gonna shrink it down a tiny bit in here now you can see here we have more faces going here and the next thing we're going to do here we're gonna actually cut it through okay there's really a quick way to do so is going back here and we're gonna do F3, so we're gonna do a quick search and then I'm just gonna do bridge edge loops. Okay, you can select that or you can do control E, whatever works for you. And then suddenly you can see that we just punch a hole through that in here. And it's perfectly fine with us. Last time we saw there were some variations on here, on this side, it actually supposed to be smaller on the inner loop. So what we do here, we're gonna go top view I'm gonna hit S and Y, and it's just gonna shrink it down a little bit. I don't know how much it's going to be, but if you have more accurate reference, you can certainly do that. But this is how far I want to go with it. So let me come out. I think maybe I can S Y come in a little bit more. So that looks a little bit better. Yes. Okay. So this is because I'm holding the actual ring, so I know how it looks. So I'm just gonna go with this. You can definitely explore whatever you want to do and getting familiar with Blender. Okay, cool. So this is what we're having so far. And the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to definitely cut off this entire body. We're going to have in that shape going on here. So what I will do here, I'm going to actually adding a loop cut, Control R, adding a loop cut in here. So you can see here, if I'm moving my mouse cursor, there's a loop going on here. So I'm just going to go with this. And then I'm going to select one of the edge because i want to move this one a little bit this further this way to the top view i'm going to select this one and wg to kind of slide it over here so just roughly line up here and for the other side i don't really need to worry about it because i'm going to using a mirror modifier to kind of doing the same exact thing just copy paste but hit number one to go to the vertice mode. By the way, the, the reason my vertices looks this big, if you're just download the default blender, you need to getting some proper setup. And I have a quick videos about this and you're gonna go check on here on the right hand corner. Now what I would do here, I'm gonna select the, this entire thing and I'm gonna hit X, you know, because we're in the X remote, so everything being selected and hit X to delete the vertices then next I'm gonna select all that vertices 
that I don't want it, of course, all these, but I'm making sure you save this middle one so because we're gonna use this one. Hit X to delete the vertices, and now you can see we only have half one we made. And of course, this part doesn't have a face because we're just kind of adding a loop cut. And then what we need to do here, I'm gonna select these four vertices and hit F key to fill. And now we have a face in here, okay? So cool, so we're good for that. And then next, we're going to adding a modifier and it's called a mirror modifier. We're going to go to this kind of wrench icon and then this, we're going to adding a modifier. So we're gonna call here, here's a mirror modifier. Then suddenly you can see that there it looks exactly the same on the left hand side to the right. So this is pretty easy, convenience. And, and you can actually kind of get that clipping and making sure everything is kind of merged. So what I'll do here, I'm just gonna go Alt Z to X remote, select all that vertice on the edge and hit G X, just kind of grab it on the side. You know, you see there's nothing changes, it's good. But I just wanna make sure all these vertices duplicated is going to merge together because we are doing the clipping and the merging them together. Okay, it's all good. So now, I think so far it looks pretty good. I don't want to have this mirror modifier to stay here the whole time. So what I would do here, I'm just going to simply apply it. Okay, so now after I apply the modifiers, I will be able to access all these vertices and get everything back. And in order to double check what we have here, I'm going to hit A to select everything and hit the M key to merge and I'm gonna go by distance. And now on the right hand bottom corners and remove the zero vertices, which means there's nothing we merge, there's no duplicated vertices, but this is something I often do while using a mirror modifier. So I just wanna make sure there's no duplicated faces or vertices in here overlap. Okay, so far, so good. You can see there, we still have a little bit chunky stuff in here. It looks doesn't look that smooth. So what we can do here, we can actually make it smoother. A lot of time when people think about getting things smooth, it's going to use subsurface modifier. However, in this case, we're dealing more like a, a hard surface modeling. So typically the bevel modifier will be working perfectly. So what we need to do here, we're gonna go here, modifier, go to the bevel. And now we can see here, the basically bevel is just gonna get in the corner to separate into different uh, vertices so it can make it a little bit smoother. So I can show you what I mean. So right now the mount is too much. So what I would dial it down is I'm actually gonna put in a couple of zeros between. I see. Now you can see here, we have something beveled in here. So that's the corner it looks like. The segments is decided how many segments you can do. So you can bump up like yeah, a couple of these. And now it's looking a little bit better and smoother. If we zoom in really close, this looks not that good, but if we are gonna actually come out, it's not too bad. So before we do that, I can see there, it's not really like a proportional correct when you're doing that, this one. So what I would do here, I'm actually going to apply the scales, everything for this model, and then decide later on if I'm going to apply the bevel or not. So I can do control A to apply scale or transformation where you can do all that, do that. And you can see that all being applied, location, rotations, everything. So that's a very important step to do that. So now when you see this, it looks a little bit better. It's not really stretch everything. That's the important part when you're dealing with some issue like this. Okay, now we're looking pretty good, okay? So now what I would do here, I'm going to shade smooth and make it a little smoother. It was okay. And the next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to to actually having a subsurface modifier later because the bevel modifier need to apply first in order to maintain that good hard surface shape. There are two ways to go. We can go here. We can go subsurface modifier, click that, and you can dial change the shapes so over on the viewport level and you can do that. It looks nice and smooth, right? Another way, the quick way, is also my preferred way to, to do this, is just select this and hit a control two or three or four, whatever, it depends on your subsurface level you wanna go. So I can go control two, and then you can see that on the modifier side is everything being set up. So it's very simple and to do. So, so far, I think it looks pretty good for the body, and we're getting pretty nice and smooth, and the body shapes, and uh, beautiful bevel and it looks not that hard as 
actually in this way it looks a little bit more photorealistic when you render things out because in the reality nothing is super sharp angles that's not really existing in the real world so this works very well okay cool the next thing we're going to creating this kind of like a metal bridge or this part and can connect these and that's going to be the most tricky part for this beginner tutorials when you're modeling this ring let's get started and then we're going to do shift a this time we're going to use a curve and then right now we're going to choose the bezier curve now you can see here we have a big curve on top view and the s to shrink it down and then go to the front view so this is kind of still too long i'm going to keep shrinking this and now you can see this is what it looks like in here so i can temporarily disable the reference image and then you will see this is the curve so far and it's still not the shape that we want what we're going to do is some adjustment there go to the side view hit g and z to grab it on the here and hit r to kind of rotate it 90 degrees kind of making sure this looks straight in mean, this way and then go to the front view again tap key and you can see here we have a couple handles if you are a photographer or graphic designers this looks very comfortable for you guys because this is the handle that you often see in the adobe when you are using the pen tool so you can have that so i'm just say like these two kind of hit r to rotate it so you can drag it in here and i can even hit s to shrink it down to control the curvature of this curve so what we can do here we can just going to do here and just do a minor adjustment now i'm going to enable the reference image and then I'm going to go back to select the BZ curve, hit G to grab it, and the Z axis. And I'm just going to kind of roughly line up the shape. I'm going to select this handle, hit G to grab it on here, hit R to rotate. Again, hit grab it here, hit R to rotate in here. So now you may say, well, Wimbo, this looks like just like a thin line. It doesn't look like the one we are building so this is what we're going to do next for the curve you can see here we have a tiny icon here and we're going to click it and then this is where we can actually be getting the volume through the curve so we're going to go here and go to the geometry and then go with the bevel now what we really can do here we can just kind of change the depth and uh, drag it and i can see here well now we can have some volume going on here again we're going to positioning here r to rotate it just getting that line up that according to the reference image the reference image is not 100 percent accurate but uh it's gonna do our best to do this type of thing okay r to rotate it and the r to rotate it and so far you may think well the curvature looks match on this side but the top view is looking too high so what we can do here we can hit a to select the entire curve and right click i'm going to do a subdivide and basically subdivide is divided to two vertices in the in the middle section so what you can do here we can just select the middle one and hit s to kind of r to rotate it and then we can just even drag it down here okay so it's not that high in, in the, for the curve based on the reference image okay so i can do that and of course this is still looks a little bit too thin so we're gonna actually make it thicker so i'm gonna click here and holding shift and drag and it's going to increase in a very small increment so i'm just gonna bump it up the volume a tiny bit to getting the proper sizing i think that looks about the right size probably need a little bit bigger so i'm going to hit shift dragging somewhere like that i think that looks about right yeah okay now i can see here this is some part of the open up so what we can do here go select the curve we are going to select the one end double g to to slide over here and then we can kind of push in and now i can even actually just kind of getting that rotated properly because i wanted to touch that part and at the same time i need to making sure it's close to the reference image alt z to go to the extra mode I'm just going to select the entire thing, the G to come back, R to rotate it. I'm thinking we probably need to have another vertices to kind of control that curvature. So what I would do here, I can try to 
scale that down and then what we can do here select these two vertices and subdivide okay so i have another hang though over here so i can basically select that really push in i'm going to to read adjusting that curve so i'm actually don't want this top one now i can hit select that hit x to dissolve vertices if i hit delete vertices it's going to discontinue this curve okay so you want to make sure you do the dissolve vertice so now what we can do here yeah so what we can do now we can select these two x subdivide so we have another one here so i can just drag it down here getting a little bit closer to the shape that we want and select this one vertice double g this hand select this handle double g to to drag it over here and then also kind of rotate this one so i want having this one actually stuck in here not really like it just flowing on down here so you can see there's there's a gap in here so i'm gonna do that to making sure it's toggled in same time to making sure that curvature maintained properly dissolve vertice doesn't look very good r so or i think maybe i can just dissolve this one to redo it one more time these these all vertices just select these two and hit x to subdivide so now i can just use in this one definitely the less vertices you have on the curve the more smooth it's going to be and uh, that's also the the rule of thumb for when you're dealing with pen tool when you're working with photoshop and illustrator <clears throat> hit G to grab it in here and hit G to grab it in here I mean it's roughly I think it's just about right okay so it looks about right and now from side view feels like this is look looks a little bit too thicker so I wanted to dial it down a tiny bit shift click and drag just a tiny bit I think that's looks better okay so now if you notice that you can see that a little bit chunky and it's not that smooth as we want it to be so we can go here to increasing the resolution for this one by default this is the 12 we can do one thing quickly fix this we want to bump up the resolutions however the issue is going to have is if you're not going to convert this curve into mesh this should be fine by just visually look like it's fine it's very nice smooth however we doing this rain we are going to modeling a hole in here when you applying boolean operations with these curves and the body the resolution need to be a little bit similar because the body doesn't have a whole lot of geometries so if the top having a lot it's not going to work very well so if you are not really understand what i'm saying uh, just following the tutorials and you will understand it later okay so i'm right now i'm just gonna go with the default now so since the shape is good let me check what we're having here and before i decide to do a backup so far it looks fine everything stick in as the one is i'm gonna do select the curve shift d to duplicate it and then right click let it snap back to where it was hit m key to creating a new collection and i can just say backup now it's in the backup and now it's going to temporarily disable that so we're going to continue work with this now because it's a curve object we cannot really do a whole lot of things because there's no other geometries like a mesh so what we need to do next i can uh, select this one and to convert to mesh go to the object and go with the convert to mesh or you can just right click convert to mesh okay once you do this watch what's going to happen here it's going to change to a mesh icon so now we have if we go to the tab edit mode now you can see that we have all these vertices going on we have access to that okay so this is pretty nice to have relatively saying this looks pretty decent amount of vertices compared to our body and the body doesn't even have a whole lot but i think this is workable and now if we go to the alt z and i want to rotate this one a little bit because right now we can't really line up exactly that way it is because this is not super accurate at least we can know the angle of this top versions metals it looks like 
I can hit R to rotate it about like that. I think it should be fine. If you're dealing with this a very rough image when you're rendering from a distance like that, you don't need to do too much detail work in here since we wanted to do a little bit fine detail tutorials to show you how to do this boolean modifier so we are going to do that and now let's start boolean operation select the body we're gonna select a boolean modifier boolean in here you can see here we have insect unit and differences and then we're gonna do the difference okay you're gonna select the object using the sample tool and the sample body all right so right now it's called curve but we can just say small metal or what do you call it then that is the the part that we are going to select and immediately you will see here we got something generating here the shading doesn't look very well and simply because we have no geometries to work in here what i'm saying is there's no actual vertices going on here the next thing we're going to do here is we are going to apply this modifier however before i really do apply all these modifier i want to save a back up because once we apply this we are going to have the access for the vertices however we're not that easy to manipulating the shape and adjusting that accordingly this is one of the challenging that when you do a modeling so what we do here we're going to select the ring body shift the D to duplicate it and then right click and hit M to move to backup we have a one in the backup so if something didn't work out we can use that one as well next what we're going to do here we are going to apply modifier one by one where you can apply all but I'm just going to apply one by one in this way you will be able to go having the, all the access for this and now the body part what we can do here we can actually fix all of these uh, one part and then creating a hole properly okay so I'm going to temporarily disable the small metal on the top I'm gonna start fixing this geometry stuff the reason we having the issue with all these shadings is because we're introducing a lot of ngongs ngong means a face that consists with multiple vertices or more than four edges if I go to the edge select mode you can see the hair this in this face has a lot of vertices and the edges in here and for this one is so you could people call it the rectangular this is consistent with four vertices so this is a, a quad this is something that we wouldn't want to see in the 3d world if we go here we are going to do some quick adjustment accordingly okay we're going to select this loop under the vertices select mode we're going to hold alt and click one edge then we're going to select the entire loop okay we can just hit the f key to fill that entire thing we're going to, to go to the x-ray mode we are going to having this one kind of extruding it out a little bit I don't know how far it's going to be but this is we want to creating some shapes and depth then go to the top view we can go control R adding a loop cut in here just support uh, the geometry and uh, now next thing I'm going to do here I'm going to do the same thing in here select the entire loop holding alt click and hit F key I'll go to the front view alt Z and I'm just going to drag the thing down a little bit. It's getting a little bit depth. That's so far what we can do. Now, we look at shading. Sometimes I really wanted to check the normals, which is the direction of the faces. We can go here and they go to the face orientation. If you see this, everything's showing blue color. This means it's facing to the outside, which is right. And this, if we're going to inside, if everything flipped, then and this is going to show in red so so far we're doing pretty good so next thing we're going to do here we're just going to do some quick adjustment to getting the shading fix because we have so many ngongs so now i'm just going to select this vertices double g to slide over because by hitting double g's is not going to break down the actual shape it just kind of maintain the shape and then we can get them done okay so we don't want to destroy the shape after you apply the boolean modifier we're just gonna make everything a little bit simpler okay double g to kind of slide over now if you don't like this cover kind of look and we can change it back to the gray color so what i would do here you can see here these two we can definitely double g to slide over and you might think well Wimbo, you're not really fixing not really 
getting everything into qua. So you even have some triangles going on here. You are absolutely right. The whole point of having this is we want having some decent resolutions or details to work with. And then if the shading looks good, it looks all right. We can certainly get everything in quads, and but it's going to take a quite a bit of time to do so. If you're doing professionally, you want to getting the decent result, and also you need to understand what's the purpose of you doing this model. It doesn't mean everything needs to be quad. That was going to render the best work for you, because if you're really doing that as for game engines or doing that as a professional jobs, then you have certain requirements to do. But for us, if we just want to render some visuals, elements, getting some good visual images, then you don't need to do that. So far, it's still not looking very good. So I'm going to go with the, the face orientation. Okay. Now what I will do next, I'm going to cutting a loops. It's going to kind of support the edge and the shading very well. You can hit the K key where you can go to the knife tool right here. And then I'm just going to cut into generating some actual vertices supported edge. Okay. And hit control so you can have that. Then do that. And just getting something going on here to get a little bit better support. So now I'm going to go back to the selection mode. I'm going to see how it looks like this one. And then definitely I'm going to select everything, hit A to select everything because I've been sliding points to next to each other like this one, to sliding each other next to each other. But this is the time we're going to merge the duplicated or the overlap points. I'm going to hit the A key, A key, M, by distance, now you can see we removed 20 vertices. Also because the merge distance is very small, so basically you just merged all the duplicated vertices. Here. So far, it's all right. And now what I can do here, I'm just gonna take a look at it, see if I can get other things fixed. Double G to kind of move here, this one, double G, and, um, and then two, X to dissolve the edge rather than delete the edge. If I hit delete edge, it's going to make a poke a hole in here and I could just do dissolve the edge. So you can actually see the shape still maintaining, but we're getting better geometry. So here, go to the vertices, double G back in here. And I can actually want to connect these two, hit J to join it. And then I'm going to go back to the vertices. I'm going to select this edge, hit the X to dissolve the edge. Just trying to fixing some of that. I'm trying to eliminate the vertices where I X, dissolve edges. And you definitely need some time to getting good topology understanding to, to fix all that. So that's take a while. Let's see what we're having here. And if I'm adding a bevel modifier, let's see if how it goes how it goes. Well, not too bad, I think too big and yeah and then control 2 adding a subsurface modifier Now I can see here, we got something going on here. If I can make this as a quad, that looks fine. A, M, and by distance, merge them. Remove two vertices. And so far, I think, what we can do here? Double G to kind of move up in here. And uh, this one, double G to slide over here. Double G to put in here. Just trying to get in some edge a space going on here and of course what we can do here we can join these two select these two vertices hit j to fill, uh, to join them and then hit number two to go to the edge selection mode select this edge x to dissolve the edges okay so that looks pretty good then next i feel like this set edge is like too close to each other so what i would do i'm actually Going back to the vertice selection mode, 
Double G to slide it over. Double G to pump up a tiny bit. Uh, and then I'm actually going to hit X to divide it. And I'm going to use a knife tool again, hit K. Select this one, put it in here, and enter. It's getting a more, one vertices. And then hit double G to kind of slide it over here. So we're still maintaining the shape, but we have a pretty decent uh, space going here. So I can you can even adjusting that because you don't want to have it too thick over here. So, so next thing we can do here, we can just select these two vertices, hit J to join that. Yeah, it's kind of fix the shading and also we have more quads going on here. Double G to kind of move in here. I know it's not perfectly all the quads perfectly done, but we are getting all the shapes that we want. And also this is a like really a small amount of details we want to do. And the one thing that really put people off on the bullying is just because the topology is really challenging to do. So what I would do here, I'm going to hit K to do that, select this, and adding one more vertices, enter, and then select this one, kind of move away. Now we can select these two, hit J to join that, that's gonna be another quad, and one, two, three, four, five, this is actually quite a bit vertices, so what I would do next, I'm going to the double G to slide it over here. As long as the shading looks fine, I'm cool with this. And what I will be thinking now, I can actually adding a subsurface modifier to take a look at it, how the thing goes. And let's go from there. And let's go subsurface modifier and level two. Yes, it's not that bad compared as I thought. So what I would do here, because subsurface modifier is gonna shape the lower path around so i'm actually want to adding a loop cut to support that shape control r to getting that and now another one so you can see here these are not really that easy to edit on hit j join them as a single loop so but we're gonna do it anyway if i'm enable that looks not too bad and enable the small part on the edge so i think the amount of details we are getting here are good and also I'm going to adding a subsurface modifier for the top metal control 2 to having some of there you see that that details I think that's totally fine with me um, then I'm going to kind of refine that a little bit disable this yeah people may think this is incredible wrong because we have a lot in gone but for me as long as the render result looks great and it can be used professionally, you really don't want to spend a whole lot of time to do this because this is a beginner courses. And I just want to let you guys know that you don't need to beat yourself so hard to really just getting some project done. Topology really take time to master it. If you're really new to this, if you're beating yourself so hard on that, you will really make a whole lot of progress when you working with Blender. Okay, so I want you to kind of have like a little bit easy mindset to kind of making progress. Perfection is going to be your biggest enemy at the beginning. Okay, and so far I think that's just totally fine. And then if we enable that, you can see we have some level of detail here, but I want to have a little bit sharper edge on this. This side edge is not that harsh, so I'm going to control R, adding a support root, control R, do that. And then you can see here, this is not really that easy to edit on. We don't have enough vertices. So what I will do next, I'm going to create my own. So I'm going to select this one, double G to slide it over here. So I'm gonna using a knife tool to cut it over here. This one, double G to move up. These two, double G to move close to each other, G. So I think it should be fine. A, M, and merge by distance to remove one vertice and hit K to select it here. And just creating some vertices between. Okay, so trying to getting a complete loop cut. 
Okay, now hit enter. So now we have some vertices going on here. So I'm going to do some justification. Double G to slide it over here. G. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so far, I think it's fine. Let's take a look at it when we're having the subsurface modifier enabled. So I think that was okay. All right, so that is where we're going to stop because we have a nice edge in here already. Uh, if I, if you don't like this shape, we can just do a modification on that. Double G definitely always. All right, so you can see that we have some edge. So when you really do a close shot like this, you know that we have a hole in here. So that looks fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna skip over this one. I'm gonna speed up. Okay. Now we have a rough shape going on here and we're just going to do some minor adjustments to getting that curve looks nice and beautiful. So go in here and here. I, th I feel like we need some vertices going on here for sure. So control, so we can do some knife cut in here to support that. And the tricky part, one trick that when you're dealing with ungons, as long as ungon is in a flat surface or a kind of flat, it's, it's that's not a really big deal. Uh, but if you have a, like a, a different like a angles or something, that's going to have, give you a lot of trouble. So for this part, so you see this is ungon, but it looks just fine. But for on the edges, something that that doesn't really work very well. See here. So what we can do here, we can creating some geometries for this to kind of support that double G to slide it over here we can G to slide it over here. and then we can do these two so like these two just kind of getting some breathing room double G to slide it over here so now we can do that all is going to be sliding so it takes a little bit of time efforts to Definitely, their professional jewelry modeling software is going to make this look process way less painful. But for the purpose of this one, I just want to let you guys know this is possible. Number two, to kind of get that dissolved, dissolved edges. I'll keep this in mind that a lot of time you just don't have the opportunities to really have the perfect tool, perfect timing. A lot of time you just need to to learn how to conquer all these issues going on here. You can't really just waiting for the perfect moment. I wish that will happen to my career, but a lot of time that, that is just not there. It's not to happen easily. Now, next, I'm going to adding a loop cut inside, to getting that support a little bit better. Let's do it here and control R, do that. And hopefully that just super easy to fix. I know some people is gonna screaming <laughs> on the other side of the screen, like this is not a right way to do it. But, you know, if you only stuck with this blender, you want to get something quickly done. Well, this is the way to do it. You can't. And then you, you would definitely want to spend some money on the add-ons and also spend a lot of time to crafting your skills to achieve that result in here. But without really getting into the dirty work, you you can really get some pretty good result to come out of it. Okay, I think I'm okay with this. See, yeah, so here I needed to have a, a vertice going on here. So I get the K, just getting that. So, 
and let's see okay of course in the very bottom part although we do not see in there anything we're putting here but just for my personal preferences i want to have something going on here so i'm going to con alt click in here and this time i'm going to hit Control v to bevel it so it's just getting i think on our loop going on here so quickly have in that so that's going to be just fine for me so on the other side you see there where i have really nice shading going here this is not that perfect and the other part but i if i really wanted to fix that i need to spend more time and for the purpose of this tutorial you don't have to and the, the enough details we're getting from here is enough okay of the day okay and in here so we put it in you see some details down here and some D up here down here and we can make a little bit smoother let's go double G to slide it over here that looks just fine it's enough the level of details and uh, yeah so we are done with the modeling part for this wedding band for a guy okay so let's close that reference image and take a look at it just fine if you even look at through it in a close shot it looks just okay again if you really want getting a perfect topology you can spend times and hours to get it done i know what i want so i am okay with this next stage we're going to move to the texturing lighting and the styling which is the exciting part all right so for texturing and the lighting part of this tutorials i want to work backwards as you can see here this is going to be our final render all the props is really being built and everything's been texturing and being beautiful illuminated and I want to break it down the scene to let you guys see what exactly happened and in this way it would be much easier for all of you guys to have a quick overview to know what to do and then you can watch a lot of tutorials that talk about how to add doing things one step step by step the reason I'm doing very details on the modeling I think that's the most challenging part for a lot of beginners when you do texturing it's very easy and the quick overview is more important than the very every single steps so what I can see here this is the scene that was happening in here as you can see here this is the scene that we currently have under the world shading tab I discontinue the background lighting that's usually have in default to continue and then I'm just going to kind of cut it in here and holding control and right click and draw that and then there's no lighting if I'm closing the lighting tab so it's going to be completely dark and currently we're in the rendering mode and also we are using the cycle render engine under the GPU so you can do a lot of things with this and it's gonna give you the best photorealistic result so anyways let me turn on the lighting part as you can see here in the scene you don't see anything and the lighting this is just a simple cube right here so i have a, another folder is called a cube it's basically it's kind of like a stand this stand is basically just a cube and you extend it that's very easy to model and same thing for this backdrop you can just adding a plane to extrude down the these two side for all these props and environment, if you have watched my other tutorials, you will know how easy it is to make. Is you can just simply create it on your own. And these two are just duplicated rings that we have different materials. If I'm gonna click one of the rings, then you will see what the material looks like. It's very simple. It's just a principal BSDF with a certain color. So I, what you can do here, you can just do Shift A adding a search principle bsdf and then having that 
nothing changed and I'm just to crank up the metallic to all the way to one that's what I did and the roughness I'm kind of dialed down to like a point one something it's getting a little bit of roughness going on because in reality there's nothing 100% smooth okay so I'm leaving a like point one to give you some a little bit good look and for the color it's just using the default color so you don't actually need to change anything just one thing just crank it up is the metallic and the base color is just a default color so nothing special and i can hit x to delete it for the other one i have another gold one and if i click this it's just having a different color i can show you what rgb number it looks like and also you can usually i use the hex number this you can just copy paste this number when you're doing the color for this and same thing still same roughness and the metallic all the way to one nothing fancy it's not that complicated you don't even need to UV unwrap anything because this is just one solid metal we should be all good for this and it, the next thing for the lighting part is can be a little bit tricky and right here you don't see anything in here it's simply because the lighting has been modified a little bit I have like five lights over here, so as you can see here, and especially for jewelry lighting, the simpler the jewelry design, the more difficult to light them, since because they are super reflective, they're gonna reflect the environment everywhere. But good news in Blender, we can achieve something that are not that easy to achieve in the photography studio. And I'm gonna show you why. So now here I have a bunch of lighting. If I'm actually disable all that you wouldn't see anything i want to show you where the light is placed and also why we're doing this so first thing you can see here we have a sunlight let's enable that once we i enable the sunlight you can see there is a defined lighting shadow this is what i want this is called a hard shadow but i'm not a big fan of having this like super harsh lighting on the subject and then i'm adding a more light one point light it's actually covering the top of the edge trying to separate from the background and then i'm adding another light which is kind of the main light to getting that gradient over here the reason you don't see that in the environment is because under the object property i'm actually hide the ray visibility on the camera so that's why you don't see it in this environment and but it actually exists in here and also the lighting i use is different compared to the default light so that's what the lighting material looks like it's like this you get a material output you get an emission shader and the gradient texture and i'm changing to the spherical and then i'm having this with object so this is something you can memorize this and you can use this a quick easy to getting some a little bit better quality of light having a soft transitioning on the, on the edge it works just like a real light so that's why i'm putting in here and now you can see here if i'm putting the light very close to the subject in order to getting nice and smooth light however it actually blocked the camera view one thing if you are in the actual photography studio then you have to photographing a image with this light going on here and then do it in the post photoshop in blender we can simply just hiding the visibility of this light but still affecting on the lighting on the subject which is super amazing and this is something you cannot do inside of regular photography studio and then next thing i'm just adding on another light just going on here to getting some a little bit back on the top edge of lighting to getting some smooth lighting going on here as you can see here i'm clicking here you know the light is going on here same thing i'm actually disabled the ray visibility on the camera so you don't see that on camera but you still see the lighting over here on the scene on the subject which is very cool and i'm using exactly same lighting materials but i have different strengths and you can dial down or dial out accordingly and the last one i'm actually having another main light in the or you can call a key light in the front then i mean enable this now you will know where's the key light it is located on the right side corner and you will see the center hot spot is right here if I'm actually enable the lighting right here. So the whole light is gonna having a beautiful gradients from the hot center and the getting a little bit darker to the edge. So this is what real light works in the photography studio. So that's why I'm using this kind of materials to do that. 
And I have a separate tutorial talking about lighting textures. You can follow the link on the right corner. You can watch that tutorial later on. Okay, so I'm actually going to disable this. Now everything has been illuminated. If I'm disable certain part of the light, you will see this is this is something that is a bit disappeared for the hard shadow. And also because I'm using a kind of light back here, I accidentally creating a beautiful harsh lighting over here on the ground by using the sunlight with the light. That's just uh, something that uh, sometimes happened and it just feels like I love that. A simple uh, lines going on here, it works beautifully. So that's just the way I'm gonna keep this. This is the fun part of playing inside the blender. You can do a whole lot of stuff with it. And if you wanna change the certain angle of your subject, you can certainly select everything and hit double hit R and you can rotate it and just finding the good composition and the, the look you want. And so far, this is what I chose. And overall, this is supposed to be a pretty simple and easy scene. And the challenging part is on the lighting and the material is just so simple to do. For this tutorials, because I post image on my Instagram and many people DM me to ask for tutorials. So I made this backwards after I make the entire render. So the main focus was for the modeling. So I get that done part for you. If you want to get access to this Blender file, I will upload this Blender file to my Patreon groups. You will be able to access this file if you are one of my Patreon. And if you're not, you can purchase this Blender file in my Gumroad page and it's only cost $5. And you can actually have access to see the lighting, everything, the texturing, including all the models, and you should be able to have some time to play with it. This is one way to support this channel. I'll be able to continue to uploading this tutorials and getting more good stuff to you guys. And thank you so much for watching and uh, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.